On the kayak fishing show this week, we're headed south, going to Panama with Pesca Panama. We're gonna be fishing in some gnarly spots for blue trevally and huge roosters with writer Paul Leibowitz and Ken Whiting. Stay tuned, this one's real fun. At the forefront of any sport, you inevitably find someone pushing the limits. While kayak fishing has been exploding in popularity, Jim Sammons has been doing just that. Uh, yeah, look at these. Nice. From the seat of his ocean <laughs> kayak, Jim challenges the world's top game fish and puts his kayak fishing skills to the ultimate test. Never fought a kayak, have you, fish? From freshwater to saltwater, Jim's mission is simple to discover the best fishing destinations in the world and prove that anything is possible from a kayak. The Kayak Fishing Show is brought to you in part by Ocean Kayak, makers of the Trident series of fishing kayaks. Ex Officio, clothing for the adventurous spirit. Scotty, the way to fish. Standard Horizon, nothing takes to the water like Standard Horizon. Maui Jim, eliminate glare, turn up the color. And the Heliconia Press, cutting edge outdoors media. This week on the Kayak Fishing Show, Jim heads down to the Pacific coast of Panama to join Pesca Panama Sport Fishing and explore one of the most productive and least pressured sport fishing grounds in the world. Jim is joined once again by world champion whitewater kayaker become obsessed kayak angler Ken Whiting, along with fellow Californian and longtime kayak fishing buddy Paul Leibowitz. <laughs> Oh, sprechen Sie Deutsch? Paul is a full-time outdoors photographer and writer and is founding director of the Kayak Fishing Association of California. Paul is also one of the most passionate kayak anglers you'll ever encounter, which made him the ideal candidate to join Jim on his Panamanian fishing adventure. On this trip, uh, we invited my, my good friend, longtime friend, uh, Paul Leibowitz. He's an outdoor writer um, who basically specializes in kayak fishing. Um, he was a client of mine many, many years ago, kind of got him into the sport, and uh, he found the addiction to kayak fishing too, and uh, he's been able to make a career out of writing about the sports, writes for a lot of great magazines and uh, Western Outdoor News. He's also here uh, not only just fishing with us, but he's, he's working on articles and being our team photographer. So I decided, hey, I, I'm going to hire this guy, Jim, to show me how to, how to uh, do this stuff at La Jolla, because I wasn't much of an ocean fisherman. I was a freshwater fisherman, and that big blue was a little bit intimidating at first. I have a little bit of a reputation for doing stupid things, just because uh, it looks like it's gonna be fun. When that line came taut, I couldn't believe the strength of the fish that was pulling on the other side. My kayak picked up speed, and off I went on my first sleigh ride. California yellowtail, about 20 pounds. Of course, Jim was my new best friend after that. The guys will be targeting the relatively untouched area around Koiba Island, a spectacular tropical island that hosted a penal colony and effectively remained closed to the public until 2004. With lack of development making access to the area difficult, the floating Pesca Panama Fishing Lodge provides ideal access to the area and gives the guys their best shot at hooking up with the enormous tuna and marlin that the area is known worldwide for. You get in, you get in against those rocks, and you go back and you'll have blowholes where the vent tubes come up, they'll fill up with water and blowing out, and then you'll have sea caves. And of course, this is what you're seeing above the water, no telling what all is below the water as you look at it. 
Uh, it, it's amazing. It, it's it's kind of a magical place. And of course, you're get, you're getting in tight fishing areas too that aren't usually fished. Right. You know. Stay tuned as the rods start bending and the reels start screaming in the magical blue waters of Panama. This week on the Kayak Fishing Show with Jim Sammons, Jim is in the Pacific coast of Panama with Ken Whiting and fellow Californian Paul Liebowitz. One of the greatest things about the fishing grounds in and around the island of Coiba and the surrounding archipelago is that it offers the opportunity to hook into seemingly endless variety of sport fish. To warm themselves up and shake any remnants of jet lag, the guys decide to target one of the smaller but more exciting sport fish, rooster fish. And it isn't long before the fish start chewing and the reels start to scream. Spots, very tropical islands, fishing some pretty sketchy areas, uh, a lot of boiler rocks, a lot of moving water, and got some great rooster fishing in yesterday. Best place I've ever gone kayak fishing. And I've gone kayak fishing a lot of places. This place is so fishy. The water's lively. Uh, you know, and we've been we've been going into some danger close situations. It's about as adrenalized as you can get when you hook up on a jack. Right? <laughs> fished hard all day. Um, fished again a lot of, around a lot of islands and uh, very surgery. It's a little different from what I'm used to fishing rooster fish. In, in Baja, we fish along a lot of sandy beaches. Here we're fishing along these steeper islands. Uh, again, a lot of surge, a lot of water moving, but that seemed to be where the, the fish were biting the best. So, uh, caught uh, quite a few really good quality rooster fish, uh, one Kubera snapper. So um, overall, for our first day here, and just still trying to figure the whole situation out, it yeah, was baby. a, a very, very good day. Good really, uh, my goal was to get some more rooster fish. They're such a great fight. And uh, right off the bat, first day, got into, actually got into about five rooster fish. And I landed successfully two of them, but uh, they were all just a great fight. And they also seem to hang out in the coolest spots, spots where the waves are roll, just rolling in and smashing into the cliffs. They, they seem to hang in the aggressive areas. So when you hook them, you're almost, you're, you're, you're half battling the waves and half battling the fish. A great first day of fishing in the bag, the guys load up and make their way back to base, which is conveniently tucked in behind one of the nearby islands. After running luxury fishing trips in Alaska for years, Captain Jay Gustin decided it was time to change things up and focus on a warmer destination. Panama's stunning countryside, incredibly friendly people, and its world-class fishing made the ideal location for a sport fishing operation. When combined with Jay's passion for providing the ultimate fishing experience, the result was Pesca Panama Sport Fishing, one of the most unique and luxurious sport fishing operations you'll find anywhere. At the center of the Pesca Panama operation is an old barge that they've converted into a luxury mobile fishing lodge. 
Now while guests are out fishing all day, this mothership moves from location to location, which provides anglers with easy access to endless fishing spots and minimizes travel time. Well, we have a 70-foot barge here that we bring people out. That's kind of our floating home base, and it gives us the versatility to move her through this group of islands we have here off the uh, coast of Panama here in the Pacific Ocean. This, like right where we're sitting here today, is one of our favorite anchoring places, and we've been to several others already this week. So it gives us a versatility to bring people out so they can enjoy the islands and still be able to move around these different anchorages. It's a little bit different concept, but it works very good. Panama is found just north of the equator, which means that whenever you head down there, you can bank on it being hot and humid. Although kayak fishing in extreme heat isn't nearly as challenging as kayak fishing in the cold, you'll need to hit the water prepared because paddling can easily lead to heat exhaustion. And so that's what we're going to look at this week in the Ex Officio Kayak Fishing Tip of the Week. Your biggest concern will usually be avoiding heat stroke. And the trick is to avoid strenuous activity, avoid direct sunlight, staying hydrated, and helping your body's natural cooling process. Protecting yourself from direct sunlight starts with wearing sunscreen and a wide-brimmed hat. But here's where a lot of people go wrong. The natural thing to do when it's hot is to wear a t-shirt and shorts, but you're way better off wearing a long sleeve shirt and long pants because they protect you from the sun's harmful rays and they help with your body's cooling process. What exactly does that mean? Well, your body naturally removes excess heat by perspiring and then you further cool down through the evaporation of that sweat. This means that your clothing should be loose and light and have good airflow to aid in the evaporation of that sweat. That's actually what first hooked me on Ex Officio clothing. They've got a great line of super light and breathable shirts. Everything from traditional fishing shirts to one of my favorites, the Neptune, which is like a super quick drying long sleeve t-shirt. They also have a whole bunch of different styles of light, loose fitting pants, like their Amphi convertible pants, which can be converted to shorts. On your feet, you can often go with a pair of flip-flops, but if you need to walk any distance over rough terrain, a good pair of water shoes are worth their weight in gold. The other key to staying cool in the heat is to stay hydrated, and that means drinking lots of water, because your body is going through it quick. With all the storage space you have in your kayak, there's really no excuse not to bring plenty of water out with you on your kayak. You'll be amazed how much better you'll feel paddling when you're fully hydrated. Avoiding heat strokes really not that complicated, but you do need to plan for it and think about it. Until next time, I'm Jim Sammons, and that's your Ex Officio Kayak Fishing Tip of the Week. For more tips and your chance to win a fantastic kayak fishing package that includes an Ocean Kayak Trident fishing kayak and Standard Horizon VHF radios, visit kayakfishingshow.com. With some bad weather rolling in, the guys are forced out of the wind and into a sheltered bay off the island of Coiba. Here they trade in their heavy tackle for some bass and muskie setups, as this spot is known for its snook fishing. Today, uh, we've been fishing Coiba Island. Um, came over to a spot what uh, we were called, was called the snook hole. And uh, it held true to that name, because uh, I think Paul was about three casts into it and got himself a nice snook. bit later I got one and then uh, Paul got another one. Yeah, baby. Yes! That's what I wanted to catch too and it's one of the definitely on my list of fish I wanted to catch here. What a beautiful fish. Oh third cast in that little sliver of beach right on the beach and jumping, jumping, jumping. Two snook and got into the jacks. I mean, th that's the interesting thing to me. The snooks and the jacks are intermingled right around those rocks where the bait was popping off. You just didn't know what you might catch.
got a jack, some snapper, just very, very cool. Very, very fun, fun fishery over in the, in the snook hole. Um, I, I paddled out, saw some breaking fish, and got a, a really good jack on, the, on my bass gear, which was just a good fight. I mean, catching a uh, you know 12-pound jack revolve, and we call them Toro, the bull, because they're so tough, and uh, on, the, on the bass gear was amazing. This is my spotted bay bass rod. I usually catch one or two pound fish on this thing. And Jack, or we call him Toro down in Baja, are notoriously tough. And, and this guy just put up a heck of a fight. Man, what a good fight on that light gear. Learning good paddling technique not only lets you paddle longer, harder, and with more comfort, but will also help you catch more fish. In this week's Ocean Kayak Kayaking Tip, World champion kayaker Ken Whiting explains one of the most important strokes to learn, the sweep stroke. Sweep strokes aren't just great turning strokes. They also come in handy for keeping your boat pointed in the right direction when you're fighting a fish, which was particularly helpful when we were fighting fish near the boiler rocks in Panama. It gave us some control over the direction that the fish pulled us in. Now there are two types of sweep strokes that you can use, forward sweeps and reverse sweeps, and both work whether you're stationary or whether you're moving forward. The trick to both forms of the sweep stroke is keeping your paddle as horizontal as possible while sweeping as wide an arc as you can out to the side of your kayak. For a forward sweep stroke, you'll start at your toes and sweep to the stern. For a reverse sweep stroke, you'll do the opposite using the back side of your paddle. For both, make sure that the active blade is completely in the water while you're sweeping. Otherwise, you'll just be splashing water and not really turning your boat. Now, the trick to getting some power into your sweep stroke is involving your whole upper body and not just your arms. And the way we do this is by twisting at the waist while we take the stroke. Something we refer to as torso rotation. This means that instead of reaching forward or backward with your arms to take a stroke, you'll turn your whole body. Now, when you're sweeping your paddle out to the side, you're pushing with your arms and unwinding your body at the same time, which gets your big core muscles involved. So that's the sweep stroke, and that's also your Ocean Kayak Kayaking Tip of the Week. For the most comprehensive guide to kayak fishing, pick up a copy of The Ultimate Guide to Kayak Fishing at your local outdoor store or at kayakfishingshow.com. With a few good days of Panama fishing under their belt, the boys are prepared to step things up a notch. Stay tuned as they hit the open water and hook up with some hard fighting fish. Yeah! The Kayak Fishing Show is brought to you in part by Ocean Kayak, Ex Officio, Scotty, Maui Jim, Standard Horizon, and the Heliconia Press. Welcome back to the Kayak Fishing Show with Jim Sammons. This week, Jim's pounding the blue waters of Panama's Pacific coast around the stunningly beautiful islands of Coiba. We are hanging out in pretty much one of the sickest spots that I've ever seen. This is Panama. I don't even know where, except the Pacific Ocean. After a few days of fishing roosters and snook in a sheltered water around Coiba Island, Jim, Paul, and Ken decide it's time to move into the open water in search of bigger game. Paul, Ken, and I are each trolling these very large bonita that the, uh, the guys jigged up for us this morning. Very strong bait. <laughs> I mean, these things really take a lot of line. So, like I said, this is why we really like to have these uh, lever drag reels. So I can just nudge it slightly up into gear. A little bit more pressure than what you're going to get from a, uh, just the regular clicker on a reel. And we just slow troll. Basically go for a paddle and hope something comes along. It's not long before Jim sees one of his favorite things in the world, a school of dolphins with a flock of birds giving chase. Because where you find those two, you'll often find tuna. <laughs> you throw a bait out, you don't know what you're going to hook into. It, it could be, you know, the schoolie 
Um, and these are actually good quality schoolies. I mean, I'd be happy with these two that we caught any day, the 40, 40 pounders. Mine's 38, yours 42. Um, I mean, that's a, a great fish. You know, in, in amongst the uh, the porpoise schools. Um, that was, that was crazy. Yeah. yeah, that was pell mell. And yeah. on the popper. On Jim, the popper, on the yeah. I've never, I've never caught a tuna on a popper. What an exciting way to get it to see a tuna come out of the water and crash on it on a surface popper, on the Seville um, surface poppers. That was amazing. And I mean, when, when we were came up on you as you were landing your fish and you had all those porpoise still hanging with you while you yeah. were landing your fish. I mean, they were checking it out. What an, what an incredible uh, fishery. I mean, just to, to be out there with that, that wildlife in, in such a place that, like I said, you, you put out that, that popper or that live bait, you never know what's gonna happen. Goodness, man! Panama rocks, dude. Panama freaking rocks. Back the boat! Back the boat! The, those porpoise literally led Ken and I to where I hooked up. I mean, right. We were uh, going along in squadron formation, and they peeled off to the right. It's like, hey, the porpoise are going. Off. We can reach them this time. Yeah. That was great. To protect us from the heat and sun here in Panama, we're wearing the Ex Officio Neptune shirts. Ex Officio uses their sun guard and odor resistant technologies, which makes them great for traveling in those long days in the sun. Made of 100% polyester, they're very lightweight, very quick drying, and designed to wick that moisture away from your body. You can see all of Ex Officio's clothing line at exofficio.com. Although Jim hasn't yet managed to hook up with a marlin on this trip, he did tap into a great tuna fight from a kayak, and he added snook to his life list. Not a bad start to his first Panama fishing adventure, but that could all change very quickly as tomorrow he heads to Hannibal Banks, just east of the island of Coiba. The banks are known worldwide for the spectacular marlin fishing that they offer. Next time on the Kayak Fishing Show with Jim Sammons, the Panama adventure continues as Jim busts into the breakers for Blue Trevally and searches for marlin and massive tuna in the Hannibal Banks. And that's another thing I love about the ocean, man. You just never know what's going to happen. Just throw the kayaks in the water and 10 minutes later he sees a marlin swim by him. Do it. But will Do it. Why keep filming me? <laughs> but Will has to stay on the boat while we go on the beach. He will get a shot from the beach. He's got to have the shot from the boat. Looking towards the beach while we're relaxing on the beach. Can you, can you shoot us hanging out and sleeping on the beach? Yes, I, I think that's an important part of the story. But you need to stay awake because Will, you know, you got to film while we're CSD. <laughs> <laughs> If you're interested in learning to kayak fish or taking a kayak fishing trip with Jim Sammons in San Diego or Baja, visit kayakforfish.com for more information.